I had played only two of City Interactive's games before this one. SAS Secure Tomorrow, which for a budget game was pretty darn good, and the first Sniper Ghost Warrior, which I played for 10 minutes before deciding I hated it. So I was really surprised to see a demo of Ghost Warrior 2 on Steam. That right there deserves something along the lines of the Iron Cross for City Interactive's sheer bravery, because over the course of the seventh generation of gaming, the demo had been disappearing. Developers weren't releasing them anymore, and I can't really say I blame them considering the quality of half the shit released over that generation. But that's where my praise stopped, because the demo was fucking atrocious. Everything I hate about the modern military shooter is right here. Heavy scripting, painful linearity, everything dictated to you, from when you can fire, to when you can even so much as aim your fucking gun, and even how fast you can move. I'm not kidding. And, as an added slap in the face, there's this one part about halfway through the demo, where with no warning at all, you're allowed to take the initiative yourself in deciding how to kill a couple bad guys. Nice little cock tease for about five seconds, then back to being controlled tighter than Airstrip 1. I can make a whole video on this demo alone, picking apart every little thing, but I prefer all of you go play it yourselves, because me sitting here talking about it until I'm blue in the face about how bad the demo is can't do it justice, but rest assured, it did a perfect job at convincing me Ghost Warrior 2 is not worth buying. But then I found this on the Steam page. A little DLC called Siberian Strike. And it claims that in this DLC, the only thing you'll have is your map. You won't be guided at all. Nothing like that. And all of this for the low, low price of only $10. On top of what you would have to pay or have already paid for the base game if you already bought it, because it's not standalone DLC, it needs the main game to work. And it struck me so funny because the demo I played was the first level of the game, and I thought all of the levels were like that. So, in my current state of mind at the time, it looked like the only hope of at least some semblance of a real fucking game was locked behind an extra paywall. I flipped out. I was ready to buy this game and tear it apart, tear City Interactive a new one, and as Destiny would have it, the game went on sale shortly after I discovered Siberian Strike. Four bucks I paid in total, three for the main game, and one for the DLC. So I fire up the game, I'm pumped, I'm ready to go postal on it, I get by the first level, fire up the second one, and it wasn't much different. Sure, the game was no longer dictating how fast or slow I could move, and I could take out the bad guys how I wanted to. Sort of. But that's not really saying anything. Ghost Warrior 2 fails on every level of what a good first-person shooter should be. And you can see that right from the get-go in the level design. Arguably the most important part of any shooter also happens to be the worst part of this game. It's like you're going down a fucking pipe. Ghost Warrior 2 is so slap you silly linear that it doesn't bother even trying to hide it. If you look in the lower left hand corner, you'll see a nice little mini-map of the area where a small section is lit up and the rest is dark. I managed to make it outside the small lit up area a couple of times, and the game gave me five seconds to get back into the combat zone or I would automatically fail. Some parts of the level are bigger than others, but there's also plenty of invisible walls inside these areas that prevent you from doing even simple things like climbing up a rock to get a better vantage point. Oh, and you have a marker showing you which way to go through the level at all times, like you really fucking need it. This whole thing right here screams contradiction. You're taking a sniper rifle, a weapon designed for long-range fighting, and putting it into a cramped corridor shooter. I'm not an expert on real guns, but most of the situations I got put into, I'm pretty sure could be done with an assault rifle and the proper scope. And speaking of which, are there other guns? Yeah, sort of. You have a pistol as your backup weapon, and you can pick up other sniper rifles from enemy snipers. And that's it, at least from what I found. I found assault rifles lying on the ground, but I couldn't pick those up for some reason. I was able to find a semi-auto sniper rifle on a bad guy, which was a huge welcome because did I mention that every rifle the game gave me was bolt action? What, are we going back to World War I here or something? You're telling me that modern-day Black Ops commandos don't have anything better at their disposal than bolt action rifles? <laughs> Give me a fucking break. That was my experience in Act 1 in a nutshell. When I got to Act 2, it was pretty much the same thing as the demo. 
I was following this guy, taking out bad guys once he gave the all clear, one or two parts where I could move around a bit, even blow up some AA guns. Then I got to the second level and I was following two guys around, and then I gave up because I got bored. Yeah, I gave up. I'm not the least bit ashamed to admit it. This game gave me no reason to continue playing. It has nothing going for it. Even the parts I mentioned earlier, where I said there was some resemblance of a game, the action bubbles as I like to call them, they're not any good either. When you get to one of these points, all the enemies are either automatically tagged for you on screen, or they show up on the radar, and the only real freedom you have is deciding what order you want to take them out. And even in some of these action bubbles, where you're sneaking through an area such as what you're seeing right here, the game is not only pointing out the targets for me, it's also telling me when I'm clear to shoot them without alerting anybody else. And this was the best experience I had out of what I played. Oh, and get this, Ghost Warrior 2's idea of a challenge is if you fuck up during one of these action bubbles, every other bad guy will automatically know exactly where you are and start shooting at you, and it's next to impossible to get out alive. Mainly because you don't have a decent backup weapon like a silenced SMG or a rifle that isn't bolt action. You know, now that I think about it, the bolt action rifles are probably another one of Ghost Warrior 2's cheap tricks to further artificially inflate the difficulty. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense now thinking about it that way. I died on many of these areas multiple times. Why? Because I didn't expect the game to do anything like this. When you're being told what to do and when to do it for so long, and the game suddenly makes you think on your own without telling you, of course you're gonna get confused. It's like, oh, well excuse me for expecting you to tell me that I could finally think on my own, considering you've been leading me by the nose like a fucking tour guide for the last goddamn half hour. <sighs> Ghost Warrior 2 isn't a game at all. It's one of those interactive movie pseudo-games that mollycoddles you for 20 minutes, gives you two minutes to think on your own, if you're lucky, then goes back to mollycoddling you, rinse and repeat. There's more of a game in the average Call of Duty, and I mean that when I say it. But what about the elephant in the room? Siberian Strike. Well, that's what makes my experience with Ghost Warrior 2 even more perplexing, because... I can't believe I'm saying this. But it's actually good. Whoa, 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 hold up there, Contra, did you just say- Yeah, I did. Siberian Strike is good. At first I didn't like it because I saw there was a waypoint marker showing you where to go, and all the enemies were showing up on the radar, so I initially thought that the little bit of marketing I read was bullshit. But as I continued playing, I couldn't have been more wrong. Yeah, the level design is still very linear, and the radar still doesn't bother hiding that fact, but in nearly every encounter, I had to survey the area, watch and memorize the patrols of the bad guys, plan out my attack accordingly, and make my shots count to make sure I didn't alert anybody. And there were plenty of nail-biting moments as I got into the right position to line up that perfect shot to take out two bad guys at once because I knew there was no way I could take them out separately. And there were also plenty of times where I worked so hard to get through an area, and one mistake later, Boom! I was dead, and I turned the game off in complete disgust. Just like I did when I was playing a game I enjoyed, and the same thing happened to me there. I'm happy to say I enjoyed Siberian Strike a lot. I enjoyed it so much that I thought to myself when I was playing it, you know what, after I'm done reviewing this, I don't think I'm gonna throw it off my hard drive right away. I think I'm gonna go back and replay it. It was fun, it was engaging, and it made me wonder why didn't City Interactive design the main game like this? Did they learn from their mistakes? Was this a response to some overwhelming negative feedback? I'll probably never know, but what I do know is that if they had built the main game like Siberian Strike, Ghost Warrior 2 could have been a decent game. But instead we got a pile of junk with the only decent part locked behind an extra paywall. You know, I can only imagine what it was like paying 60 bucks for this game. Because I know there are some people that did, and I feel really bad for them, because this was before Steam offered refunds. But I can tell you this much, if that were me, and then I saw Siberian Strike, oh my god, I don't want to know how angry I would have been. And I don't know if this was intentional on City Interactive's part, but with the way it's set up, it sure seems that way. 
And it reminds me of something Armex said during his Action 52 review. He said something along the lines of, instead of making one decent game, they had to make 51 piles of horse shit so that by the time you get up to this point and you play something decent, you don't care anymore. It's like adding salt to your wounds. And for the people who paid full price for this game, I'd say that's a pretty accurate description of their experience. So anyways, what's the final verdict? It's a bit of a mixed bag. The main game is terrible, there's not one redeeming factor about it, but Siberian Strike is good. Now is it worth buying, even for Siberian Strike? I would say yes, but only if you buy it during a holiday sale, which is what I did. Because by default, Siberian Strike is 10 bucks. That's the same price as Ghost Warrior 2 itself, and it's only about an hour and a half long. Two hours at most. And as I said before, it needs the main game to work, so if you don't buy Siberian Strike when it's on sale, you're looking at 20 bucks, and it's definitely not worth that price. So final verdict, buy it for Siberian Strike, but wait for a holiday sale.